MRI has sort of been viewed uh, as, uh, and it is, it's, it's probably one of the more costly imaging modalities. It costs a lot of money to maintain an MR system. You need the liquid helium. You need the liquid nitrogen. It costs a lot of money to buy an MRI. There was a time when, you know, it, it, a 1.5 Tesla magnet would cost about $1.5 million, right? That's a lot of money for a, an institution. Um, so image, the imaging is expensive. It takes time. We talked about the 30 to 45 minutes per patient. An x-ray takes, you know, a breath hold, right? It just takes the amount of time that you're in the waiting room and then you're out, but it usually is not more than five, 10 minutes. The imaging, the imaging itself for MR is about 45 minutes, but that, that's outside of the amount of time that you're waiting in the waiting room to get, to get the IV, to change your clothes, and this and that. So it's not the best modality for screening um, because it's expensive and it's not available at all times. Even for trauma, right, CT is much faster and more available and answers the questions that are much more relevant for things that, are, that need rapid assessment. So CT and plain film are probably the modality of choice for those areas. MR is sort of the, it's the tool of choice to answer very specific questions that likely can be answered by the MR, but not always. There's a new technology that's uh, kind of putting MR on its head uh, called MR fingerprinting, which is not the conventional way of thinking about imaging. Um, and I think it's going to have some interesting effects on how we think about MR, but it's too difficult to describe. Uh, and then now the hybrid imaging modalities like PET MRI, I think is a very unique tool um, that allows you to hybridize um, the strengths of positron emission tomography, which is its sensitivity, but poor anatomic localization with the benefits of MR, which is soft tissue contrast and high spatial resolution, but poor sensitivity. So it's probably going to be the imaging modality of choice for molecular imaging in the future. Wow. Um, so what interested me in science, I guess, was, uh, I mean, it was what I gravitated towards probably because I just like doing science more. I had a very good chemistry teacher in my high school. I went to a public high school in Livonia, Michigan. So normal public high school in average day-to-day -day America. And I had a really passionate chemistry teacher that taught our normal chemistry class and then our AP or advanced chemistry class. And I, and I think it was a testament to him. He, many of our students that graduated were interested at least going out into, originally into chemistry related fields, but then found that chemistry was not related with their passion. I originally went to the University of Michigan interested in chemical engineering because I thought I liked chemistry, but mainly it was because I liked this chemistry teacher, Mr. Danes. And, um, and then I found that I really enjoyed applied physics and I wanted to be a nuclear engineer. Uh, and that's where I did my training, but then I took a class in medical imaging and sort of applications of radiation and matter uh, and physics of imaging, essentially. And, uh, and then that, that I found was my true passion. I didn't like the power industry as much. It was also a time when the United States was gravitating against nuclear power. And um, I did an internship at a hospital, at Henry Ford Hospital in sort of imaging. I applied and uh, was accepted into MIT thinking that I was going to do positron emission tomography research. Um, but then I did MR and I really enjoyed it and I again similarly had a, a great mentor and uh, uh, someone who I TA'd for, Bruce Rosen, who's a good friend of mine still and he and, uh, and my, my advisor came up with a project that made sense for me in looking at MR and its relationship to neurodegeneration. And then there I interacted a lot with patients and saw the benefits on that. And research is challenging because research, you have to, um, you have to be satisfied with negative results a lot of the time. And uh, patient care, you don't. Patient care has its benefits, even patients that are you know, doing poorly 
um, you feel like you benefit them, even as a radiologist in a variety of different ways. And uh, so that combination was alluring. And uh, I, applied, I applied to medical school. I thought I was going to not do radiology at the time. I thought I was going to do neurosurgery or pediatrics. But then radiology was the right calling. And then as a radiologist in, uh, at Mass General when I was a resident and then the staff, I really enjoyed the interactions that I had with patients. And I did a lot of, um, I did more interventional work. I really enjoyed the intervention and the more, that more of that interaction. So I did body imaging because it had more of a, you know, you talked a lot more with patients than you did as, an, as a typical radiologist. And, uh, and because I did body, um, most cancers are in the body, in the abdomen and pelvis. And I shifted my focus from neuroscience to uh, cancer. And now I am the head of body imaging here. And, uh, and, I, and I do research in MRI, magnetic nanoparticles, in the tumor microenvironment in pancreatic cancer. I think you follow your heart. I think you always, I think you listen, you don't follow the job market and say, I'm going to do this because there's going to be jobs in it. I think you follow because you always, you know, you, it, with a good education, I think you'll always be able to get a good job. And I think you want to enjoy what you're doing um, because you work hard to get to that point. And I think that's, I think you always follow your heart. Um, I enjoy what I do a lot. I think I'm blessed to have a combination of things on a day-to-day -day and a week-to-week -week basis that keeps me sort of, <laughs> for lack of a better term, out of trouble. Um, and, uh, and I enjoy it.